there's something missing in our understanding of intelligence. Intelligence isn't just training. Uh, the, the way the neural network is conceived right now is great and it's lovely and it'll be better and we'll argue forever. But it, you want to know, wouldn't it be great if I said, look, I know how to invent an architecture and I can give it a soul. And what I mean by a soul is some, I know for real that there is internal reference. As soon as I'm not fake internal reference, and if we could generate that mechanism for internal reference, that's why our goal di direct. That's why you have to. We can do that. The test for goal directedness. Yeah. Get that goal directedness. You would love that robot more than the one that's just made to look like it does, because you'll have more fun with it. Because you better generate, search other problems, get more novelty. Hell, you'd be able to fall in love with that robot for real, but yeah. not the one that's faking it. What about fake it till you make it? Well, I think a lot of people fall in love with 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 um with with fake yep. humans. Yeah. It's n it's nice to it's nice to fall in love with something that's full of novelty. Yes, I I you know I could imagine all kinds of robots that I would want to have a close relationship with, and I don't mean like sexual. I mean like intimacy, because but I just don't think that um, novelty generation is such a special. Okay, there's like mathematical novelty or something like that, and then there's just humans being surprised, and I think we're easily surprised. That's fine, but that's that. But you don't think that's a good definition? No, that's of good. I'm happy to be surprised, um, but not globally surprised because someone else. But I really want. I was why, why I'm a scientist. I really want to be the first to be surprised about something, and the first thing in the first in the universe yeah. to create that novelty, and to know for sure that that novelty has never occurred anywhere else. That's a real buzz, right? That's is there a old, way to really know that? I, I, you have to have a really big lookup team, <laughs> right? Yeah, you're never going to be know for sure, right? That's that's one of the hard things about being, and scientists searching for this type of novelty. Maybe that's why mathematics mathematicians love discovery, but actually they are creating, and then when they create a new um, uh, mathematical structure that they can then. They, you can you can write code to work out whether there's whether that structure exists before that that's almost why I would love to have been a mathematician from that regard to invent new math that really I know pretty much for sure does not exist does not exist anywhere else in the universe because so contingent right but this gets into like you are you said a few times that I still really don't understand how you actually plan to do this to build an experiment that detects how the universe is generating novelty or that time is the mechanism. So the, the problem that we all have, which I think is what Lex is pushing against, is if I build the experiment, you don't know what you put into it. So you don't know what, like if you, um, unless you can quantify everything you put in, all of your agency, all the boundary conditions, you don't know if you somehow biased it in some way. So is the novelty actually intrinsic to that experiment or to that robot, or is it something you gave it, but you didn't realize you gave it's gonna it? It's going to be, it's going to asymptote towards that, right? You're never going to know for sure, yeah. but you can start to take out, you know, you can use good Bayesian approaches and just keep updating and updating and updating until you point to one sense of purposes. So you want to bound on how much novelty generation yeah. could be. Yeah. Got it. So the ability to generate novelty is correlated with high assembly index? Yeah. With assembly index? Yeah. And yeah. Because the space of possibilities is bigger. Hmm. So uh, that's the key. This could be a good uh, so a running joke of like why Lex is single. This could be a good part for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you, so what you're looking for in a robot partner is ability to generate novelty. And that's, I suppose you would say, it's a good definition of intelligence, too. Mm -hmm. Boy, is novelty a, um, a a fuzzy concept. Is creativity better? Yeah, I mean, it's, that's all pretty fuzzy. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of the same. Yeah. Maybe that's why aliens haven't come yet. It's because we're not creating enough novelty. Like, there's this some kind of a hierarchy of novelty in the universe. Well, I yeah. think novelty is like things surprise yeah. you, right? So it's a very passive thing. But I guess I would have meant by, by cre saying creativity is I think it's much more active. Like, you think there's like a mechanism of like the things that exist are generating the creativity. Novelty right. seems to be there's some spontaneous production. It has it's completely decoupled from the things that exist. No, I I understand. Right. I, I yeah. think that's really really creativity good. Creativity is the mechanism and novelty is the observable. Yeah. 
novelty could just be surprised. Your model of the world was broken and, and not necessarily in a positive way. So that's surprise. So there's three things now. Let's go surprise. back. That's cool. Right. Let's go. Okay. You've got surprise, which <laughs> is basically, I'm. Um, I don't. I mean, I'm surprised all the time because I don't read very much. I'm pretty dumb. I was like, "Oh wow, this!" Yeah. I often used to invent new scientific, you know, ideas, and I was really surprised by that. And then when looking literature properly, and it's there. So surprise. That's to the extent that you don't have full information. Um, creativity. The act of pushing on that um, kind of on the causal mm -hmm. s structure and novelty, which is measuring that degree, mm -hmm. right? So, and I think that's pretty well defined in that regard. So you want your robot, I mean, in the, and in the end, that's why actually the way the internet and the printing press share some, um, I actually think creativity has dropped a bit since the, crea since the internet because everyone's just, just, you know, just regurgitating stuff. But of course, now it's beginning to accelerate again because everyone's using this tool to be creative and boom, it's exploding. So I think that's what happens when you create these new technologies. Isn't it? That's really that's really helpful. There's a difference between novelty and surprise. Okay, I was I think I was thinking about surprise. If you give me a toy that surprises me for a bit, it'd be great. A robot that surprises me, you An know. Experiment that surprises you. Yeah, I mean that's why I love doing experiments because I'm I can't. It's still exciting. Yeah, surprise is exciting. Yeah, even negative surprise. Like some people love drama in relationships. Like <laughs> it's like what, why the hell? What? Why'd you do this? That, that could be exciting. Too. I could imagine companies selling updates to their their companion robots that just basically generate negative surprise, just to just spice things up a bit. Yeah, it's the push and pull. That's that's one of the components of love. As you said, love is a complicated thing.